E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. Welcome in, everybody, to a Thursday edition of Birds 365, your daily deep dive in all things Philadelphia Eagles. I'm Xander Krause, joined by my, ho- my co-host, John <clears throat> McMullen, Eagles <clears throat> insider, the number one. Eagles insider as we bring you the latest news, insights, and everything you need to know to stay connected to the birds. Johnny Mack, how you doing on this Thursday morning, brother? Uh, doing well, yeah. Uh, Saquon week in full full effect. Yeah, man. Saquon week. Going back to the Giants, uh, back to his home uh, where he was drafted. You think it's a big week for Saquon, John? You feeling a big Saquon week? Um, I don't know about on the field. I mean, obviously it's uh... – <laughs> No, I don't. I don't mean that good or bad. I mean, you know, it's all dependent on a lot of things. Number one, what do, what do the Giants want to stop? And maybe because of <laughs> we we know from Hard Knocks the way John Mara uh, took that, um, they probably don't want to have Saquon Barkley beat them. Yeah. Um, and that might be a a positive for the Eagles if they're over sort of extending to stop Saquon Barkley uh, in the wake of you know, the other playmakers, um, that might actually help the Eagles. But I, I do get the feeling like it's one of those where where Joe Shane and Brian Dable shouldn't have to, you know, approach the game like that, but they might have to approach the game like that. I mean, really, because John Mara took that, took that departure like a fan. And, you know, if he gets 170 yards and you're giving away jerseys next week, I mean, that, that's not going to look good for the for the head coach of the other team and the GM of the other team. So I'm not being facetious at all when I say that. They're because of that, their their main objective might be to stop Saquon Barkley. Yeah, it's a fair point, no doubt about it. We'll see uh, how it plays out. We've got a great show planned for everybody uh, today. Plenty to talk about. Uh, with this Eagles team as we prepare for their Week 7 matchup uh, versus the New York Giants. Birds are 3-2. and two. It's a weird 3-2, and two, I'll say that. Everybody feels, uh, at least I feel, a little bit odd about being 3-2. and two. Now, I do think you're going to win a couple of games here uh, in a row with, with the schedule coming up, but we'll see uh, how it all plays out. We'll get into the press conferences yesterday. Jalen Hurts spoke. Nick Sirianni spoke. Lane Johnson had some interesting comments uh, yesterday. So well, Johnny Mack was in the locker room. We will talk to him about that Saquon's return as John mentioned we'll talk about Saquon's return uh, and then the injury report is what we'll get into here in the first segment Uh, any viewer chats any super chats will be addressed later on in the program we appreciate all of you guys for being here on the live show this morning and anybody who listens on the podcast we appreciate you uh, as well don't forget to hit that like button or leave us a review if you enjoy uh, the show John let's get into the injury report real quick uh, three guys yesterday, three key guys. Two of them we were pretty aware of uh, with Jordan Mailata and Dallas Goddard, but Milton Williams popped up on the report. Uh, your takeaways on the injury report, and what do we know about who's going to play this week? <clears throat> um, well, uh, negative, obviously, for Jordan Mailata. We already know he's going to be out this week, uh, at least a couple weeks, and and we'll see as that uh, progresses down down the road. Dallas Goddard as well, very unlikely. Um, he's going to play this week. Um, and then Milton Williams is a surprise that that popped up on the injury report was unable to practice. I did see Milton, um, in the locker room and that's a positive. Um, so I think, you know, today's going to be key. It might be a management situation. Uh, if he's not on the field again today, then you start to get a little bit more concerned, but because he didn't practice on Wednesday, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna completely rule him out. He might be able to make it back, but we got to see because he wasn't he wasn't moving uh, poorly or anything like that. So we'll have to see about that. The limited guys, Oren Oren Burks dealing with a groin, Jalex Hunt with an ankle, and Darius Slay most importantly with with his knee. They were all limited. Slay, I'm, I'm told, is trending towards playing uh, um, unless something uh, happens in practice this week. Now, he doesn't like to play on MetLife Stadium. No, but nobody likes to play in MetLife Stadium. Mekhi Becton was just ripping that stadium to high heaven yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I heard all that. Um, but, but he's trending uh, uh, on playing, um, and that's a positive if, if he can get back there. 
And Sidney Brown was was full uh, as he continues his rehab. The Eagles started the uh, practice window for Albert Ogwegbanon. So, you know, even that could be he was dealing with sort of a sports hernia type thing. Um, and Anaya Smith, who's also uh, – all of those guys are under 21-day practice windows, would have to be activated. But they were all fully practicing. Um it's going to be interesting. You know, I thought Sydney would be activated last week. They want Paris Campbell instead, which was a little bit of a surprise to me. Um, he's ready. It's not about that. It's just about, I guess, need on a particular week. And Albert O might be a little bit more of a conversation because Dallas Goddard's not going to play. So you're going to need another body at tight end to supplement Grant Calcaterra and Jack Stoll, especially how much 12 personnel Kellen Moore likes to use. Um, and you either it's either him or EJ Jenkins um, getting elevated uh, from the practice squad. So that's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, we'll see how it plays EJ out. EJ Uzama, I should throw his back as well. He could be yeah. elevated from the uh, practice squad. Yeah, so we'll and see. And I'm sure he loves MetLife as well. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what they do there. John, you think Milton Williams will play? I guess we don't know yet. It, it, did it seem like it was something that could keep him out of the game or more just a cautionary uh, rest type of thing for him? Yeah, we'll know more today about that because, like I said, I saw him. Nobody knew he was hurt because right. we were in there before practice. And now I just saw him walking out, said hello. Obviously, uh, you know, when he saw us walking in, he walked out. Um probably because of this specific injury, but um, he, he, like I said, he wasn't moving. He wasn't limping. He wasn't doing anything. So it, it's really, it'll be clear this week. If, if he's back, even in a limited fashion, you know, they're probably, probably trying to manage him through the week. If he doesn't practice again, um, that's probably trending in, in a negative direction. We'll see what happens there. A couple people spoke yesterday. John Lane Johnson said some things that uh, that were interesting to me with the with the slow start. So we'll talk about that. But Nick spoke. Uh, Jalen also spoke. Any takeaways from their press conferences? Kind of run of the mill uh, again. Nick keeps getting asked the you know the same stuff. Um, oh yeah, it was it was all Saquon this week, and you know uh, I think there were five questions on Saquon. And it's like, Nick, well, you should probably ask Saquon that. And we did. Uh, Saquon spoke in the locker room. So, obviously, it's a big week, understandably so, for Saquon. But, uh, yeah, Nick is is in, um, you know, down, down speed mode, so to speak. Uh, very nonchalant again, not his typically fired up self. Um, I think he was basically, you know, told to apologize, had to apologize. So probably not in the best uh, framework right now. Um, but, you know, he, he created a lot of this in, on his own. Um, so I, I don't think there was much to call from his press conference. He was uh, towing the line, and most of it was about Barkley um, anyway. So... Uh, obviously wouldn't give any updates on, on Dallas Goddard. Uh, he typically doesn't do that when there's any un, un, uncertainty. Jordan's was so bad, they couldn't even hide that. The issue with Jordan is, is it going to be two weeks or is it going to be four weeks or is it going to be six weeks? And we don't know that, but we'll see that coming down um, in a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll probably get a little bit more information on that. but. Uh, yeah, and then the obvious nature of trying to insulate people from criticism, which is not going well. Um, I think he understands that now. Some people blame me for that. And Nick pointed it out, and I said, please don't point that out. But nonetheless, um, yeah, I, I hope people understand at least, which I'm trying to get apart. Like, he's not calling the third and one play. He's not calling a defense. He's trying to insulate people from criticism. Yeah, we really got to keep putting that out there because I just, I see it everywhere. I know. John. I, 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 it's unbelievable to me. 
It is unbelievable to me. Well, I mean, I, I was talking to Silly about this, and Silly actually had a great take that I think you'd appreciate. Uh, we were talking about this, and he's like, look, I get being the head coach where you're going to fall on the sword. But talk about the good shit, too, you do, so that people, people well, know. Yeah. You know well, talk okay. about your record. Talk about I, the I, other you know, things look. you've done as the head coach uh, that you should put on yourself to, to give yourself a better look because everybody in Philly thinks you're a dumbass uh, when you do this. Now, you know, I, I think our viewers are, are understand where, where he's at with that, but, you know, there is a large swath of the fan base, a large Yeah, person. I mean, people, I, I said – I said you know, the same thing. Down. I said the same thing. I said, point to the scoreboard, point to your record, point to right. whatever. Exactly. Um, I, I I said the same thing. Yeah. I mean, he's taking credit for every boneheaded move this team makes. And people, some people, not all people, as you mentioned, I, I, I think our viewership is probably amongst the smartest. That's, that's always been my goal when I do this show. Yep. Um, and but there's a lot of people out there who really believe he's taken away the 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 dumbest play and doing it himself, and they believe it. And there there's two things about that. One, like I don't care if Nick wants to make himself look like a fool, go make yourself look like a fool. I don't I don't care about that. That's his problem. But you know, for a guy who preaches accountability to let these guys avoid accountability in the public sphere. Now he will say, well, they face it behind the scenes, which I get, and that's more important. But nonetheless, it's important in the public sphere as well, because if you think, you know, if you're preaching accountability, I always go back to that Seattle game. You know, A.J. Brown took accountability. When when Nick made himself look like a fool, AJ Brown stepped up and took accountability. To this day, the quarterback is not. In third and one, he is not taking accountability. The most interesting comments to me about Lane Johnson yesterday weren't about the slow starts. It was about he revealed um that they're very slow with the play clock. Very, very slow. And they're yeah, always getting up yeah. to the line of scrimmage late. And that does a couple of things. One, it gives you, it doesn't give you as much opportunity to change things to the proper direction you want to go. And it highlights to the defense, all right, they got to snap it so we can put our ears back and go get it. So there's a lot of negative that comes from that. Might be Kellen Moore getting the plays in too late. Maybe Jalen Hurts not having a sense of urgency. I don't know. I asked Jalen about it. Again, he, he, he gave one of his – Kalenisms and and deflected it, but that's what's going on because Lane is very honest, and he said we were near the bottom of the league during the bye week, and they it was a point of emphasis. You know, whether it's Kellen, as I said, getting in the play call quicker, or Jalen doing what he needs to do quicker, they got to be quicker to give them more options. So that was the most important part of his discussion, and then. Again, third and one, Nick looking like a fool. Wasn't Kellen Moore's fault either. It was the quarterback's fault. Uh, now, I I say plenty plenty of fault on Saquon Barkley for that yeah, I was whole say, that was segment very poor as well. Play, yeah, yeah. But again, why are you why are you going for the big shot on on third and one in that situation? If it works, it works. And you know, Kel Kellen says Devontae Smith was open. <clears throat> it looked like he was open, but they didn't have time to get him in football. Either way, it was the decision of the quarterback. So, you know, you could step up and say, hey, that, that was me. He doesn't do that. Does he have to do it? No. Is he held accountable for his part behind the scenes? Yes. But well, if, I think if, the inter I think the also the other interesting part of that is he – he takes accountability when it worked at the end of the game. He's like, oh, yeah, I checked into that play. Fair point. Fair point. You know, so it's like not It's not only like he's skating by it when it didn't work, but he's also pointing to the times it did work uh, almost as a – I mean, I, I, don't, I guess I don't have a problem with you wanting to bolster up yourself, but, you know, maybe take a page out of next book. You are the quarterback of the football team. Well, I always say the quarterback, it's a well-known rule amongst quarterbacks. Ask any quarterback you meet, 
If there's success, it's we. If there's failure, it's me. Yeah. That's that's part of the gig. Did and anybody ask Jalen if he checked into that play on at the end? Or did he go out? Did he did he give that answer unprompted? Um no, Je- uh Nick Sirianni. Uh and then he was asked. Nick Sirianni said it and then right. he was asked. Uh so we didn't do it unprompted, but um yeah, I mean it's obvious though, if you're watching the game. Yeah, right. You can see him checking yeah. out. Same thing with the third and one. If you watch the play, it's obvious. So when people say that's my fault, and and Nick, I believe, didn't even use the term play call. That's on me. He's probably f- referring to the game plan, the option, uh, which is built into the play. Um, but, you know, people take it the way they want to take it, and they think for this particular play, Nick Sirianni usurped Kellen Moore. It's just not the case. The, the the worst one is the defense. I mean, I was watching a. I'm not going to call him out, but I was watching a big a big content creator who's talking about the. the now Nick Sirianni's calling defense. We no. got to fire this guy. I'm like, dude, he didn't actually call anything on defense. He's he's just falling on the sword on every side of the roster or every side of the football. Yep. Can't you see that? But yeah, it's amazing how many people can't, but. And it's self-inflicted, so I don't feel bad for him. Oh, um, no, I don't feel bad for him. I'm just saying I wish, uh, you know, I wish the full context was added into the conversation, uh, and it's not. Yeah. Um, I wish you yeah, have. I certainly wish it was added to the context of the conversation because I I, it, it's so obvious it's one of those things where it shouldn't even be a conversation. But, again, why Nick is doing that unprompted, and I shouldn't have helped him, and I take – raised my hand uh, on Monday when I said that because then he came back and said, <laughs> you know, John asked me and I probably won't give you information and everybody's mad at me. And I'm like, Hey, he's not giving you information. So he's not taking away. He's lying to you. He's being disingenuous. Right. So that's what I was trying to get out. and. It got out, not in the way I would have liked, but it's out there. It's being disingenuous is the point. No doubt. Any other takeaway? Let's let's go to that Lane Johnson comment that you brought up about uh, the line of, or getting 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 in in early in the play co- clock. That was a good exchange. I think it was between him and Howard Eskin uh, right there. That was a good exchange, <laughs> insightful exchange. Um, from uh, Lane Johnson, he he seems to give you some answers. Lane Johnson, oh yeah, um, Lane's incredibly yeah. honest. Yeah, um, he can't not be. He's one of those guys, very much like Kelsey. Uh, it seems to always be the offensive line. <laughs> Jordan's that way. Jordan Mailata. Um, they're they're incredibly honest. Um, and if you ask him a question, he's going to answer it. Um. And yeah, I mean, to me, the biggest part, as I said, uh, most people are are focused on the slow starts and the constipation. That because that was a a cute little quote from Lane, but uh, I, I think the far bigger part of that was the the clock operation because um, that was revealed, and the the team knows it. Um, they're trying to fix it. They tried to fix it with tempo that ran far more tempo against the Browns. So a lot of things come into, if you're paying attention, a lot of things come into clearer focus, you know, the lack of Kellen Moore motion. People are worried. Well, that's, that's Nick taken away. Now, well, when you run tempo, you don't run as much motion because the whole goal of it is to keep the defense on the field, to keep the defense tired, to keep the defense um, from substituting, et cetera, et cetera. So that takes that number down. And why are they doing that? Um, because they're so late in the shot clock, so to speak, uh, all the time. And he said, we haven't done it well. And we've emphasized it over the past few weeks to pick it up. So it has increased. But a few weeks ago, we were damn near last in the league as far as the time before the ball is snapped. So that's something we got to improve on. That's Lane Johnson. Um, 
And obviously the, the biggest disadvantage, the most obvious disadvantage is that defensive lines can time up because they know the play's coming. You know, you, you, there's no Aaron Rodgers um, drawing people off sides when you have no time. They see the big clock too, uh, the smart ones, right. and they can they can fire off the football. Um, but then you have the other edge, you know, how sustainable. We've already seen Chip Kelly. Nobody hated Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly's offense at the end more than Lane Johnson just wears people out if you go tempo, tempo, tempo all the time. And he said, that's a double-edged sword. Um, so you can do it occasionally. But the bigger goal is when you are huddling and you are just playing traditionally, get the freaking play call in, get up to the line of scrimmage, give yourself some time. So if you need to do some things, you can do some things. Good stuff there, John. Before we move on, uh, I want to get into the injury report, not just for the Eagles. We talked about the Eagles injuries. The Giants are missing some key players uh, coming into this game, the latest being Andrew Thomas, their left tackle. So both teams uh, without their left tackle this week coming into the game. Anybody else that's notable? I know Kayvon Thibodeau is not going to play. So that's right there. That's two big guys for the New York Giants on a team that's really uh, still not that good. Uh, Who else is injured for the Giants? Anybody uh, worth noting here on the show that might miss the game that will have a big impact. Well, I think you know the biggest. Well, you mentioned the biggest. Andrew Thomas has a Liz Frank injury. He's out for the season. Already yeah. underwent surgery. Um, Dexter Lawrence didn't practice yesterday. Showed up on the injury report with a hip injury. Um, he's the Giants' best player. He's one of the best players in the NFL. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know. Um, and even Saquon, I, I said it during this season when Nick made that quote that we got your best player sort of pushing at the uh, fan base of the Giants. I said, eh, they didn't get Dexter Lawrence. Um, even Saquon said that yesterday. Dexter Lawrence is the best player on the Giants. Um, even he said it. Um, and he called him the best defensive player in the NFL. I'm not going to go that far. But he's having, if they were a good team, He's having a defensive of, of the year type performance. Um, that's how good he's playing right now. Uh, so I think they're trying to manage him uh, through the week and get him to the game. But if that if that if he doesn't play, the Eagles are in really good shape. And Brian Burns didn't practice. Yeah, same thing with the groin. I think they're trying to manage him through the week. Um, but that's something to keep an eye on. And obviously the other big one is Malik neighbors who has been out in the concussion protocol remains in the concussion protocol. And he's already missed two games. Everybody in New York seems to think he's going to play this week and he makes a big difference. I mean, they haven't had a receiver for years and he's, he's a big time talent. Um, And he's, he's done some nice things, even with Daniel Jones throwing to him. So those are the big ones, but they, much like last week, they're much more injured than the Eagles. Um, so even when you talk about Jordan Mailata and Dallas Goddard, which are two huge injuries, and don't get me wrong, that it, that really hampers the Eagles. Um, but the the Giants are even more banged up. Um, we haven't even got into guys who are limited, like Devin Singletary. Well, I don't think it's that good anyway, but Darius Slayton. <laughs> now, nah, guys Darius, like Malik Neighbors and Dexter Lawrence, shit, those dudes are good, man. Uh, yeah. De- Devin Singletary doesn't doesn't scare no. me that much. Darius Slayton's okay. Um, you'd like to have him if you're the Giants, but it's not gonna, you're not going to lose sleep over it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's some big, big-time players. Uh, their best player, arguably the best two players. Andrew's out and Dexter – is did not practice yesterday good stuff there we'll go continue to get the updates uh, on this game from john mcmullen who will be you'll be down there again at NovaCare today john uh yeah i got some stuff i got to take care of but uh i'll be there um at some point um um but um yeah some personal things but i yeah i'll be there at some point Got it. Sounds good. We got a couple other topics that we're going to get into. I'll do a lot of them after the break. A uh, super chat I want to hit, but John, I also do want to talk to you 
Uh, and we could do this after the break. I, I want to talk to you about the uh, the league news this week. A lot of trades happening in the league. Uh, I always like to get John's opinion on the big NFL news. I know we're Birds 365 and an Eagles show, uh, but I do think paying attention to the league uh, is important. The Vikings made a trade. Uh, the five and zero or six or are they six and zero? Six and zero Vikings now. Uh, five. Uh, they were five. Yeah, they had the five. Because they were yeah. coming back from London. That's, that's right. the biggest yeah. game of the week. They're playing Detroit. Yeah, that's a good game, man. That's a good game. Uh, Cam Akers was traded there from the Texans. So uh, interesting pickup for them. We'll get into some of those trades uh, before we get to the commercial break. Let me go to the super chat uh, here. I got two super chats uh, to get to. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Hit that like button. Uh, F Body Guy Forty Six checks in. Appreciate it, F Body. He says, "Any chance John can wrangle a few players to join the show? Would love to see some casual interviews." Uh, Jenny Mac, what's your response to that? I know it's a little odd to do as a beat as a beat reporter. Yeah, I I mean I I don't to be honest, I don't think it's very valuable. Um, you know when guys, you know we're we're having this um, NFL players association um uh sort of this kerfuffle they want us out of the locker room reporters um you know the policy is we we have to be in the locker room uh three days a week uh in the league as a whole and by the way the eagles jordan my the player rep jordan my is one of the best media people in the entire nfl he doesn't want us out of the locker room um there's a lot of positive from the player's perspective to get their own stories out there, to get their own uh, narratives when things happen. Um, there's a lot of positive, but anytime cameras show up, they're on, uh, they, they, you know, they, they're, and one of my main goals when we first created the show was sort of to do like a local sports reporter show where we'd have different beat writers on. That was, that was the main goal originally when we were, talking about it and doing it as a podcast and all that kind of stuff. So that was the original goal of the show. Like, I think if you, if you listen to, you know, we don't cheerlead here, so we're not going to cheerlead. So, you know, and at the same time, you know, I'm not going to bring the Kobe on to say, Hey, you're not playing well in space. What yeah. You right. Know? So, you know, there's plenty of places to get it. My personal opinion is now if Xander wants it, I'll try to do it. But I yeah, but I, I do think it compromises some of your integrity as a reporter. Um, uh, I don't think it compromises the integrity. Not, not the I, integrity, but like you just said, are you going to bring them on? You know what I mean? It's fluff, and I'm not a big fluff guy. Yeah. Um, I like that, so that about you, John. I'm not a fluff guy either. But it would be it would be fun to get them on. But I'd probably save that for another style of of show F body. Um, if I were able to do that, I don't know. Birds three sixty five is the right uh, move for that. Although John is connected with everybody. Prince Swayze checks in. Uh, by the way, thank you F body for the five dollars super chat. We appreciate that. Prince Swayze says, "I dreamt that we acquired Miles Garrett. I almost didn't <laughs> want to wake up." LOL. Probably. Probably read a stupid story on Sports Illustrated. Yeah. No, the Eagles are not. Uh, the Eagles are not going to acquire Miles Garrett. Um, yeah, he's a good player, man. Oof. Oof. I, 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 I yeah. mean, you I, don't think, I was, you don't think they would trade. I mean, like, because they seem like they're sellers. You yeah. Know? Well, I don't. I don't. The NFL's changed a little bit, but I, I do think people bring their baseball mentality or basketball mentality yeah. over. It doesn't exist. There are no sellers in the NFL by and large. Um, usually it's about players who were upset on playing with a losing team like Devontae Adams and he wants to go back with Aaron Rock. Think there's always little circumstances that develop. I don't even know what you want to call Hassan Reddick. Um but that's the best defensive player in the world when he's right. And and the Cleveland Browns are like one smart decision at quarterback, which is easier said than done. And being good. Being a really good team. Yeah, I true. mean, not not a good, a really good team. If no, they're healthy. You're right. Uh, health is part of it too. Um so I don't know if they yeah, they're they're selling Miles Garrett. Yeah. I, and by the way, if they are selling Miles Garrett, a it's a dumb decision. And by the way, they're and, and Adam uh, Andrew Berry, um, 
Adam Perry still with the Eagles, but his twin brother. But uh, Andrew, it, way too smart to selling off Miles Garrett. Yeah, yeah. I don't, think, I don't, I don't think they'll be doing that. So we'll say uh, Prince follows up. It was a dream. I know Prince. I'm just messing with your brother. Uh, I, I dream of Miles Garrett and Eagle Green. I think everybody, even even beat reporters, might dream of covering that dude. He's probably the best football player in the league. Uh, I'd say Miles Garrett is that good. So. Yeah, it's fun to hear the guys. I always say, you know, you you can tell when guys are special, and I get to cover some special players, Randy Moss um, and Adrian Peterson in Minnesota. Um, um, and over the years, getting to see uh, different players and how Aaron Donald, the way Brandon Brooks would talk about Aaron Donald, the whole week, the way people talk about, Miles Garrett was just fun, you know, and it, it continued yesterday with Brett Johnson. He's like, oh, man, I had to go in in 95. Everybody calls him 95, but, um, you know, if you're a Pulp Fiction fan, um, Samuel Jackson, there's the famous scene when they're trying to rob the diner and he tells them to pull the wallet out. And they said, which one's Tim Ross says, which one's your wallet? And the one that says bad mf -er, um, that's what somebody described as, as Miles Garrett as, bad mf -er. Yeah, that, that dude is a, is a freaking monster. John, a couple of the other names that are floating around, I, and I don't know if I'm more looking for like a report because there's so much of the, you know, Bleacher, every time there's a name on the market, Bleacher Report comes out with an article that the Philadelphia Eagles are said to oh be. Oh, my God, don't even, even start. And uh, then there's some. Is but is there any is there any real reports like is how we thinking of adding to the team? Now you guys probably he probably wouldn't lead on anything about that. But no. do you think they would be looking to add anybody? Uh, and if you did, where do you think it would be uh, on this roster? Uh, Howie will tell you he doesn't talk to anybody about the Philadelphia Eagles. He doesn't talk to anybody. So there's a lot of people who think he he gives information to Adam Schefter or a lot of Mike Garofolo, um perspective. Generally, the, the information's coming from agents, um, not, not, not Howie, generally. Um, but, yeah, he's going to keep everything close to the best. Um, yeah, he's always looking. I mean, he's Howie Roseman. He's always looking. Um, and, he, you know, the question is, how, how relevant can it be? At the trade line, like people get, people were excited about the Jahan Dotson trade. Yeah, he, I wasn't. He, people ripped me for it. I went back and watched the video on Jacob the other day of me ripping the Jahan Dotson trade. I think it was on the National Football Show, and all the comments were, "Xander, you're turning into silly of Xander this, Xander that." I'm like, dude, the dude stinks. He hasn't done shit here. I mean, you missed your two best receivers for the only time you needed them to step up, and he did it, and he did nothing. It's a waste. Yeah, of I mean, it, it, I, I, you know, he still got some upside and all that. But the the point is that I, I always make the baseball basketball comparisons. This is not a sport where you can just change addresses and be impactful right away. It's the easiest in baseball because no, baseball, baseball's one on one, right? It's what do you think about the compensation there. though, John? I mean, you just saw Devontae Adams get traded for a third rounder. You saw, yeah. Martin well, Cooper I said the compensation. There. There's nobody, nobody else who was going to give Adam Peters uh, a third round pick for just John. So you don't see how we get do that often. Well, that and people assume, oh, he fleeced Adam Peters. No, he didn't. He, he, oh, no, he didn't fleece. And, I think Howie might feel like he got fleeced. Amari um, Cooper was just traded for a third and a seventh. We gave up a third. Well, and there, seven. there's also to be fair. There's a big difference in contract. Uh, yeah, yeah, the contract. You're you're getting a very cost effective player under his rookie deal, so that does increase the value versus the really expensive player. Yeah, but to that level, no, it was too much. I mean, if you got a great player, I'm not. I'm just saying left. because I saw a lot of people make the comparison that well Devontae Adams got this and Amari Cooper got yeah now you can, uh, Adams is making like 30 plus million exactly that's a different that's a different that's, ball game. that's but I saw a lot of people go down that route and they go it's completely complete now it's fair to add that context but also say they gave up way too much for Jahan Dotson right 
put two sides of the corn, the gray area is where it falls. I uh, appreciate everybody being here on birds 365. Hit that like button, everybody. A couple people. I'm, I am going to talk to John about the NFL uh, news. I know we had one commenter in here who was looking for John's uh, take on that. Yeah. What's your take on Aaron and Devonte Adams reunited? We're going to talk about that. Armand, appreciate you being here, brother. 19 Armand, 1995. Uh, appreciate everybody in the chat. Hit that like button. We're going to get to a commercial break. We'll come back. I got some, I got some great topics. Uh, on the game coming up. We're going to talk about the first quarter scoring, where the where the fault is and that, how to fix it. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the defensive problems, not creating turnovers. Vic was asked about that. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit uh, about that. And then we'll talk about some of the league news as well. And then we'll take some viewer chats uh, as well here and in, going into hour number two. Appreciate everybody being here. Hit that like button. We'll be right back in three minutes on Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.